Hey, what's going on guys? Uh, welcome back to the channel. Um, if you're new here, my name is Jared and um, I'm in my local mountain area, uh, about 45 minutes away from where I live. Um, I want to talk to you guys about um, the camera gear and camera backpack I'm using in this video. Um, I thought about doing this in my office, but I just feel better when I'm filming and you know taking photos and stuff outside. Um, it just feels more, I don't know, authentic or whatever. Um, yeah, it just feels more in line with what the channel's based on. So I decided to drive up here. Um, it's a really nice day out. Uh, I tried to do this about a week ago and it was snowing and windy and now all the snow is melted and it's a beautiful day. So um, yeah, I wanted to go over all the camera stuff I'm using for 2024. And you know, I have switched um, camera systems a few times. I'm always trying to find the best system for me um, as far as backpacking or, you know, photography or whatever it is. So um, yeah, just want to go over that stuff, show you kind of what I'm using for photography, for my uh, YouTube channel here. And um, yeah, just kind of go through all that stuff with you. So um, appreciate you being here and uh, let's take a look. So we'll start with the outside first. So my last video, I was using the Shimoda Explore, no, the Shimoda Action X 40 which I still do have, but um, what I have kind of run into, sorry, there's a lot of bugs floating around here, so if you see me swat on my face, that's why. Um, so, uh, I used Osprey a few years ago as a photography bag, um, and I use them as backpacking as well. Um, I've always been really impressed with their harness system, with their waist belts, everything's been so comfortable. Um, it's been a hard transition to the camera-specific bags, because the way that it distributes the weights, weight, at least on my body, has always kind of been an issue for me. I've always felt it kind of pulling on my shoulders. And I'm not new to how backpacks work. I know how to set them up, but um, I don't know if it's between camera weight, um, my body type, I'm not sure exactly, but I just don't feel that they're like, they're engineered to, carry, to put camera stuff in them and then they're kind of secondary to hiking. But hiking is such a big part of what we're doing is like landscape and nature photography. Um, that I think it needs more of a front row seat. So I ended up decide, I decided to switch back to Osprey. I'm using the Atmos AG50. Um, this is technically a backpacking backpack. However, um, it is, um, pr I think, perfect for landscape photography. It's a 50 liter bag. Um, it distributes the weight incredibly well. Um, I have a upper shoulder, like back pain problem thing that I've had physical therapy on and stuff. and this has alleviated a lot of the stress and pain um, for me. So it ends up being a really great option. So I use a camera insert with it. Um, if you watch my Death Valley video, you'll have seen this uh, used in the field quite a bit. Um, it, I used it, you know, for, I mean, I guess I wasn't there that long. I was there for about three days or so, but you know, I hiked all over Death Valley with it and it did a great job. Um, it kept the weight, it keeps the weight completely off of my shoulders. I don't have any like, sore spots, hot spots, none of that stuff. Um, it just does an incredible job. So I was really happy with this. Um, it has enough um, areas for all my gear, basically. I have my backpack, or my backpack, my um, tripod on the side here. It uh, hangs out there pretty well. There's a little strap here. Uh, it's probably for like tent poles and stuff like that, but it works out really well for a tripod. Um, I'll go over my tripod and all that stuff here in a little bit. Um, and then I have my uh, Garmin InReach Mini on the front. This is also something that I would highly recommend if you're doing any sort of like adventuring, backpacking, you know, outdoor stuff. Um, it's a, a, just a great peace of mind. Um, I have type 1 diabetes, like I've mentioned a few times before on the channel. And it, um, you know, it's something I have to plan for. And I have to plan for a lot of worst case scenarios when I go on these trips. So... It's kind of crazy that I've only had this, I think, for probably like a year or so. Um, and they have like monthly plans and stuff available that um, you can choose from. But basically it turns like my cell phone into like a satellite text messaging machine so I can get a hold of my wife. I can, there's an SOS button. I can get rescued if, you know, something really goes sideways. Um, that's obviously not something that I'm planning on, but having the backup and peace of mind there is... Uh, I think really important uh, and it just, you know, for safety, for your peace of mind, for loved ones, um, you can track like your trails. There's all sorts of great features with these things and um, 
it's probably one of the most important pieces of gear that I have, um, aside from like my backpack and all the, all the other fun stuff. But um, for safety, this is an incredible thing. And I know this was about the backpack, but I went on a tangent about this, but it's true. Um, but anywho, as far as the, the other stuff, as far as the backpack goes, the harness system um, is really second to none. Osprey has engineered their uh, backpack so well um, as far as like weight distribution and carrying stuff. So um, the hip belt is incredibly comfortable as these big side pockets on the side. I usually keep like some snacks and stuff or just like everyday use items on the side. Um, the water bottle pockets have two access points here so you can have it kind of facing out or up. Um, let's see, what do I have in the top here? I don't think I've cleaned this out really since Death Valley. Got a beanie. I Looks like a little plastic trash bag. Um, I usually keep like my diet, my extra diabetes supplies and stuff in the top. There's a second pocket up here. I have a headlamp. Um, this is from Black Diamond, um, the spot. This is a really great headlamp. I bought this just a few months ago because my other one died. But um, really, really great um, little piece of uh, gear that you want to have if you're, you know, out late or out early. Um, I have a buff to kind of help keep uh, protected from the sun. Um, and then I have a, a fleece neck gaiter if it's like really cold or if I'm in the snow. I kind of always have those things in there. You never know, um, you know, what you're gonna run into. And then on the front of the bag here, you have a really nice stuff pocket right here. So you can kind of just jam like a jacket or a shirt or whatever in there. So a first aid kit here, this is by Adventure Medical Kits. Um, I basically just kind of deconstructed this thing. Um, I'm a medical professional. I guess you could say. Um, I'm a nurse by trade. Um, and so I kind of deconstructed this and made it into my own thing. Um, this probably needs to be updated and changed out a little bit because I've been using the same one for years. But luckily I've never needed it. Um, but I do have like some basic like first aid supplies, you know, uh, painkillers, things like that in here, um, you know, just over the counter stuff. But um, I made this uh, a few years back and I've always kind of carried one with me just in case. Um, so that's a nice little thing. There's also a sleeping bag compartment here. Um, obviously I'm not using this for like backpacking overnights, but um, you can, I can, I, what I tend to use it for is like stuffing like a jacket in there sometimes or something like that. Um, but all in all, um, the Osprey um, Atmos 50 or AG 50, um, it's the best bag that I've used. Um, it's incredibly comfortable, and I'm really glad I switched to it um, instead of a dedicated camera bag because they really just don't carry the weight of our camera gear and stuff as well as these things. I mean, they're not really engineered to, but I think that's kind of the problem with them. Um, there's a lot of great brands out there, um, you know, and they all do their best to kind of make it the make it a uh, a good marriage of hiking and you know workflow and that's what i thought i wanted was more a better workflow so that's why i switched to shimoda and f-stop and all these other brands but um at the end of the day it was more important to carry uh the gear around comfortably um, because at the end of the day like my back was feeling it uh so i ended up switching to a dedicated hiking bag and then just using a camera insert uh, for all my gear and um, i really have not regretted it at all i've used it several times uh, like I said, most recent was Death Valley, but it's really performed great. And another nice thing is if you are traveling with a bag like this um, and you use an insert like I'm using, um, you know, if you're on an airline and you have to check your bag, I just pull the insert out really easily. And I know the other bags can do that as well, but um, this is just like, it just takes a second. The other ones you have kind of have to like, you know, shimmy it out of the little cube or whatever and like get it out. And yeah, it, it's it's not quite as easy as, you know, this anyways. So. It's, uh, it's a system that I think I'm going to stick with um, for a while until someone, until someone um, develops a better camera bag, I guess. I, th I, I always say if Osprey made like a you know, nature photography bag, like a dedicated one with like their harnessing systems, I think everyone else would go out of business. But that's just my opinion. Um, I love these bags. I used Gregory before. And um, if you want an alternative to the mainstream big camera bags if you're looking for a more comfortable solution. I'd highly recommend checking out like a camera or a um, backpacking hiking bag with a camera insert. Not a lot of people do it. Not a lot of people talk about it because there's so many YouTube channels that talk about the latest photo bags and this and that from all these major brands. But, you know, if you want to, you know, try something a little bit different, I honestly think this is the way to go. All right. So tripod. Um, this is a tripod I'm using. Um, I've used a lot of inexpensive, 
medium expensive and very expensive tripods. And this one um, I think is the best out of the bunch. Um, obviously the more expensive tripod, tripod brands are expensive and they have great reputations for a reason. But I think at a certain point, um, you know, you have to kind of look at your budget and stuff like that. So I've used really right stuff. It was probably one of the best that I've used for sure. But I ended up switching to FLM because of the cost savings. Um, and the build quality for me is pretty much on, on par with them, or on par with uh, really right stuff. Um, this is the FLM CP30 S42. So I'll put all the links and stuff in the description. Um, but uh, this is a carbon fiber tripod. I think it weighs just under three pounds. So it's really nice to carry around if you are, uh, you know, hiking, backpacking, those sorts of things. I use this uh, for my uh, main camera. And then I also have it, bought a second one for my tripod here, or for my, I'm sorry, my, um, uh, my video setup. So that's what I use for vlogging and things like that in my filming. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, it's almost eye height for me, which is good. So I'm not hunched over all the time. And then plus the um, uh, tripod head that I'm using is from Acrotech. It's a lever lock head that I just switched to. And I forget the actual name of it but i'll put it on the screen here as well so it's pretty close um, especially with my camera it's right about here so it's a really nice um nice height for me i'm about six one um sorry i'm a little bit out of frame there and it just the the twist locks just move really well just really easy they deploy super quick as you just saw and they put away put away really quickly and easily so it's uh just a great tripod um I bought a second one just because I was so impressed with it. Uh, and yeah, I'm just, I really haven't looked back since I switched to them. They, I mean, it does all the tripod -y things that I need it to do. So yeah, if you want like a really well-made tripod and you want to save a little bit of money and not go for like the top, 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 top expensive ones, this is exactly on par with those as far as I'm concerned. I've used um, some pretty expensive ones and the build quality is the same and it might be about half the price. So if you're interested in looking into these, I definitely would check them out. Um, and the tripod head here that I was using, the Acrotech that I was talking to you about here, amazing. Um, I'm surprised I haven't used a lever head or a lever lock head sooner. I got tired of the twist locks and this thing is just so convenient. It locks in place. It has a little little locking mechanism here so you can't accidentally like knock it over you have to press it and then release it to get your camera off the tripod head this is a, a great piece of equipment all right so the camera insert i'm using is the one i used to use with my old sony setup um, in my old osprey this is a boundary um, supply um, i think it's the mk2 um, I'll put, like I said, I'll put it all on the screen. Um, but this is a camera insert. It is sloped. Um, it goes really easily into my camera bag. And um, it carries all of the stuff that I need into the field. And um, it's really easy to take in, take out, no problem. Um, it does. My workflow does slow down slightly, but it's nothing too drastic because I usually sh uh, shoot pretty slow anyway. I'm not like usually rifling through my bag to get to my camera because of X, Y, and Z. Um, so anyways, I'll show you what's in here and um, kind of show you my whole setup now. All right, so let's talk about the camera. So I switched back to the Canon R5. Um, this is my favorite camera of all time. Um, Canon system is just rock solid. Um, I've always been a big fan of their stuff. Um, I switched to Sony basically for video um, and I thought I could just kind of switch over to photo or for uh, still photography as well um, with no problem. Uh, Turns out I just really wasn't inspired to use it. And then when I was using it on the coast when I was shooting with TJ Thorne, um, I was just really nervous that it was gonna basically like take a dump on me. We were shooting in rain, salt water was all around us. I mean, these high waves, all sorts of stuff. And I was really just very nervous. It feels very delicate. I'm sure it's not the case. Lots of people shoot with Sony, you know, it is what it is, but it just didn't feel like the durability was there. And that's something that um, I really, think is an important part, especially for landscape photography, because we're shooting in adverse conditions all the time. So um, having that peace of mind has just been like a big, um, 
I mean, it's been paramount as far as um, my nature and landscape photography go. So switching back to the Canon system, the R5 is just great. It has 45 megapixels for resolution. Um, I'm extremely happy with that. Um, you know, I, I, I did lose a little bit coming from the A7 R5 um, with Sony. It's at, I think, 61 megapixels. So you lose a little bit, but it's really not much. Um, and I still have plenty of room for cropping and stuff. But yeah, the Canon R5, it's been... It's just a great camera. I love using it. Um, I use it in Death Valley. Um, it, I've used it all over the place. I've used it in all sorts of weather conditions and it just performs. I don't have to think about it. And that's really what you want out of a creative you know, tool, whatever it's gonna be. Um, I am using the 100 to 500 here. Um, this is my favorite lens of all time. Um, it is sharp. Um, I get creative compositions with it. It's light for what it is. It is small. It is the best uh, i i don't have enough i there's not enough uh good things i can say about this lens i've made some of my favorite photos with this lens and it's amazing um yeah i've, I've i'm gonna stick with canon um i know the r5 mark ii is supposed to be coming out in a little while i'm kind of keeping an eye on that if it does have a bump in uh, resolution i might switch to that um but i'm not switching systems anymore i just, i realize it you know, Canon's kind of where uh, I hang my head at, or hang my hat, or you know, it's what I like using. So that's kind of what's um, what I'm going to be sticking with. Uh, the other lens I use here, it's the uh, Canon 24 to 105. Um, it's very small. It's technically a kit lens, but I use it kind of for my my wide angle stuff. Uh, it is light. Um, it's a good walk around lens, and yeah, if I need. Uh, any sort of like wide angle-ish stuff. 24 is usually about as wide as I go. Um, I do have a 14 to 35 on my um, R6 that I am uh, filming on right now. So if I really wanted to go wide angle, I could switch to that, but it's rare that that ever happens because I don't remember the last time I've really shot that wide. Um, so yeah, this is a great um, second lens um, that is always in my bag pretty much. Uh, yeah, it's a great, uh, great lens, really sharp, really light. I love it. Um, let's see here. This is my accessory bag from Think Tank. Um, I've had this for years. Um, it just holds all my, you know, batteries, memory cards, cords. Um, I picked up this little tripod tool from um, Leo Photo. I don't know if you can see that or not, but um, it's, uh, it's, yeah, it's really nice. It has um, a little, almost like kind of like a flathead screwdriver tip on it to tighten down like plates and stuff. It has Allen wrenches, it has a carabiner clip that you can just hang it on stuff. Um, I had a Peak Design one. This has more tools on it. Um, this one that I bought from Leo Photo. And uh, I really like this. Um, it's really handy to have, um, you know, if something gets loose on the tripod or whatever. So that's a nice little carrying case. So I had to move the camera a little bit. The sun's moving, so I'm trying to keep the camera out of the sun, not get any like lens flare and stuff. But anyways, this is a filter system I'm using. Um, this is just a little pouch that I bought on Amazon years ago. Um, but I'm using the um, Case Wolverine magnetic filter system, and it works out really well. Um, I use the CPL the most, but you do have the NDs in there. And I don't use those very often, but um, it's a great system. Um, comes with magnetic lens caps and stuff. Everything's really easy to put on and off of uh, the uh, lenses. So that ends up working out pretty well. Um, I do have some lens cloths. Um, that is pretty standard for everybody, I'm sure. And then I have a, a little power bank. Uh, this is a Anchor uh, 10,000 PD power bank. So it has power delivery. I think that's what that stands for. Um, everything requires battery power these days, and I have an insulin pump that also requires battery power. So, you know, um, peace of mind when I'm in the field and stuff. I'm usually not too far away from any extra, like, power sources and stuff. But having that with me if I'm out, you know, shooting somewhere, it's really nice. Um, so, yeah, that kind of does it for the uh, photography side of things. Now, for video... I don't have like some crazy setup. Um, I'm gonna go over just a couple things here, what I use for my videos. Um, so what I'm shooting on is the Canon R6 Mark II. Um, I have switched to that just a few months ago. I was using the Sony a7C, uh, but I wanted to keep everything on Canon. I've learned a lot more about like color grading and kind of getting better colors and stuff out of things and color spaces and things like that. So um, switching back and having everything on the Canon platform has been great. And um, it's something that I'm, just going to continue with um, at this point. I know I've said that before on a lot of things, but you know, um, you don't know what you don't know until you find out later, I guess. And so um, being back on Canon has uh, just been a great, 
great transition and every, having everything on the same platform, video and photo has been really nice. And I've just been really happy with um, the R5. Um, but as far as uh, mics uh, and sound quality and all that stuff go, um, the one I use the most is the DJI video mic. I'm not gonna open it, but there are two mics on my lab, or the mic on my um, jacket right here. And there's a second one in here. If I open it, it might mess up the audio on this. I'm not going to. Um, but this case does charge the mics and the receiver, which is really nice. Um, and the receiver is on top of the camera. Um, so I get really good audio. I can walk far away from the camera to get bigger, wider shots, and still have really good audio. That was one thing I ran into that I didn't like with having the um, like shotgun style mics. And I still have a shotgun mic that I use once in a while. Um, it's the Rode USB NTG video mic, I think it is. I'll put that on the screen as well. Um, but I use that once in a while for more like ambient sounds and things like that, or if I don't want to use the lav mic because the battery, um, the battery on this, I think only lasts about four hours. So after that, you need to charge it. So you can kind of run into some issues there if you're not charging them regularly. But other than that, um, I really can't say enough good things about the DJI mic system. It's been great and I love using it for video. Um, and then my lens that I use for video, I mentioned a little bit earlier, but it is the RF 14 to 35. It's an F4. I know a lot of people like the 2.8 lenses and stuff for video, but the F4 gives me plenty of um, isolation. Um, it's much lighter um, than, two point, than a 2.8, and it's cheaper, <laughs> and it gives me really good image quality too. Um, and I can switch it onto my cam uh, my photography or my you know stills camera um, if I want to get like a wide shot, which is really nice. Um, so yeah, I'm really, I've been really happy with uh, my video system overall. So. I pretty much rounded out most of my video stuff. Um, the only other thing is I do use some extra cameras for my video um, work. I do have a DJI Osmo Action 4 that I picked up right before my Eastern Sierra trip. And I use that for basically like my driving, like in car shots and stuff since I didn't have anyone to get B-roll for me. And uh, usually Alex, my buddy does that when I'm driving around. Um, so anyways, that was really handy to have. I haven't used it um, really since then. Um, and I'm sure I'll use it at another point, but I do have some mounts and stuff like in the car for it. Um, so it's a really nice little um, extra camera to use. Um, the other thing I use um, a lot, well, I guess not a lot, but I do use is my uh, drone. Um, it does kind of give me like, just like another view of kind of like what I'm doing. I don't use it a lot because I don't like bothering people with drone noise. Um, this is fairly quiet. This is the DJI, DJI Mini 3 Pro. Um, it's a sub 250 gram drone, um, which means you don't have to register it. Um, and it has really good video quality. It does have a flatter profile. It's not log, but it has, I think like a Cine, pro I think it's called like their Cine profile. So it's a flatter thing that I can color grade myself. Um, and yeah, the flight time on these things, I think you get about like 25 to 30 minutes of flight time, which is pretty good. And um, it does really well. Um, it's really small. I can easily just fit it into my camera, like insert if I wanted to. Um, it's not big like one of like one of their more like I guess pro drones or whatever, but it gives me the kind of footage I need um, at this point. I have kind of toyed with maybe getting one of the more like video centric drones that they have, the bigger ones that have better cameras and this and that. But this really has done a really great job, and I can't really complain about it. Um, yeah, it's it's been a great drone. It gives me just like a lot of it gives me an extra you know another video angle I can use for my. Um, my photography trips and things like that. Just It's just another adjunct in storytelling, which is, um, I think, important. And um, I use it periodically. I just get nervous using it, like, by myself because I don't want to, like, run into a tree. And it has obstacle avoidance and things like that, but I just get nervous using it by myself um, if I'm trying to get, like, um, like uh, video of, like, my truck driving and things like that. I kind of, you know, I, I get nervous doing that stuff by myself. But... Um, Anyways, um, it's a great drone and um, it's a nice little piece of kit that I have for like, you know, my video stuff and storytelling in general. I think it's, uh, it's, a, good, it's a good piece of, um, or a good accessory to have um, if you're in the market for one. All right, and that pretty much does it for um, what's in my camera bag for 2024. Um, like I said, you know, I'm always on the lookout to try and make things better, more ergonomic, lighter weight, things like that. So I'm all, I'm sure my bag will change over the years. Um, but this is a really great setup for me right now, especially with like my shoulder uh, issues and stuff. And I just think that if you're in the market to get a camera bag and you're not happy with what is out there for like the camera centric, camera specific bags, 
um, there are other options and you can definitely kind of build out your own kit the way you want to. And there aren't a lot of videos on that out there. So um, yeah, don't feel like there's only like a couple brands of things you can get. Like I feel like the hiking bag with a camera insert is really the best way to go for like landscape nature stuff for sure. Um, you do take a little bit of a hit in workflow, but if you're not working that fast, it doesn't really matter. Um, and then just being back on the Canon system has been amazing. Like I've said a few times now, I'm happy to be back on the system. I love the Canon R5. It's my favorite camera. Um, I don't see myself switching. I know I've said that. Take it with a grain of salt. You know, things change, gear changes. But um, the, the, the thing that's important is, is it comfortable? Does it inspire you to create with it? Um, does it give you peace of mind? Do you have to think about it? And those are the things that were uh, at the front of my mind with my previous camera systems. And so being back on Canon has really alleviated a lot of those things. So it's, I, I think it's the best system for me. So if you follow along this long, I really appreciate you watching the video. Um, liking the video really helps me out and then subscribing if you haven't yet, if you like the content. Um, I really appreciate everyone's um, uh, support on the Death Valley video. I got a lot of really great feedback on that and um, it seemed to have done really well. So I really appreciate everyone that um, has watched it, all my old subscribers and everybody that's new that's kind of popped along since uh, that one came out. I really appreciate you being here and um, we'll see you in the next video.